we are now recording. Um, hi, everybody. This is uh, CPD, which is Creative Professional Development in the Film Department. Um, HCT with episode one of the podcast. We were all kind of realizing, hey, we're trapped, and sometimes you feel like you don't get to do anything creative. So we thought we'd put this together and have a little fun. Um, how are you guys feeling about being trapped? <laughs> that's, that's exactly how exactly, I feel. Exactly yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun. Yeah. I've enjoyed. I've been able to catch up a lot of animes that I even became into one. Ooh! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Prop just for this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, awesome. I guess trapped is the wrong word because really, you know, even though we're doing this, we're doing this to be responsible and respectful of other people. Uh, you know, social isolation is for others. And uh, I, I'm really impressed that all of us are staying as considerate of our world around us as we are. And uh, since part of what we do is entertain, um, let's figure out some ways that we can um, stay safe and healthy and amused while we're uh, at home and working remotely. So, uh, Megan, do you wanna? I've got plenty of ideas. <laughs> so my gym closed and I was really upset about that. And if any of you uh, go to the gym, you're probably just as upset about that as I am. But there's a lot of online workouts. Uh, one that's pretty good in particular is made by Fitness Blender. They are on YouTube. They also have their own website. You can go there. Their workouts are 100% free. And the fun part is you can pick almost everything for it. So like the intensity, how many calories you can burn, what you're trying to train, what kind of training it is, whether it's Pilates or like HIIT. It's totally customizable. She <laughs> gets it. Yep. She gets it. <laughs> um... <laughs> But I would just be careful of uh, fitness people online saying what's going to like be good for you because some of them aren't even personal trainers. I've noticed a few friends that I have in high school trying to sell fit like fit videos and like workout plans. So I would just keep that in mind, like actually pay attention to people that are in the industry, not, you know, your friends that suddenly that are naturally good looking and want to sell you something. It's not going to work. <laughs> mm. It's not. I had someone like <coughs> buy my, buy my workout plans. Like I'll keep you in shape. And I'm like, girl, you're naturally skinny. You've never worked out a day in your life. What do you mean? <laughs> your workout plan, your workout plan is you eat and you sit down. <laughs> Just burns. Uh, do do you have a uh, Megan? Do you have a specific meal plan that you're following along with uh, your workout yeah. plans? I mainly try to eat as much protein as I can, and I try to like eat as like clean as I can. Doesn't always work out, but I try. <laughs> I understand being trapped. You know, it only <laughs> takes so much. I ate a brownie last night, and man, was it worth it. <laughs> okay, um, cool. So uh, if you guys have any questions, meaning the audience, not just us, uh, if you guys have any questions, please uh, shoot an email to any one of us and let us know, um, and we'll try to address the questions in the next episode. Um, for your uh you know, sort of as the sorbet to cleanse the palate to the next move, we have the amazing, wonderful Elijah Love poem. <laughs> ah! Yay. <laughs> okay. So it's on me, stop crying. Yeah. I will get started. <laughs> All right. So I don't have a title for this poem. Uh, just know. Yeah, it comes, comes from the heart. All right. <clears throat> what is love? Is it my last name? Is, is it staying inside to prevent the spread of a viral illness? Is it showing your significant other how much you care about them? Is it helping an old lady across the street or giving money to the homeless? 
Is it the way you look at a slice of pizza as it enters your mouth? <laughs> is it partying with your closest friends and family? Is it meditating in silence while reflecting on life itself? No one knows what love truly is. It could be none or all of those things. What really matters is to try to be a decent human being, unlike President 45. <laughs> Zing. Okay. <laughs> Hey, that was so beautiful. You're welcome. Bravo. <laughs> Wonderful. Is it my last name? Yeah, that was, and it comes from the heart. It was beautiful. <laughs> um, now we have uh, Javi with uh, his favorite film, and this mm. is kind of a segment about you know media that you can enjoy while you are at home. And Javi. Yeah. So it's. Uh... It's kind of it's kind of like a favorite movie at the time, so it's it's going to be really specific to what's going on now. Um, the I mean, with what's going on, I know I've I've even before things got crazy, I'd watched Contagion with my brother, and you know it's it's easy to pick one of those outbreak movies as the favorite one right now because of how um, current it is. But um, the one movie I saw um, recently, I want to say about a week or so ago. Um, is uncut gems and holy shit just <laughs> just the so the, the 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 at at its basic at its core it's just a guy who's kind of a dirtbag like he he runs around makes these bets that's that's essentially what the movie is the what i found the first thing that caught my eye or my ear i should say is just the the score of the film because it's not it's this psychedelical kind of um kind of almost existential kind of music that i, I kept hearing and the first time I saw it, I was watching it on my uh, Bluetooth headphones, which was connected to my TV. I had to check my phone to see if I was connected because the music I was hearing was not fitting anything that I was watching. So I had to pause it and make sure I wasn't playing anything funky off of my phone, which I wasn't. Um, but that just uh, kind of accentuates how crazy the music is uh, opposed to what we're actually watching and, and the story that's unfolding. Um, the other thing that I really love about it and I appreciated about it, probably the, the biggest thing was how many things were going on at the same time, but it never felt cluttered. Um, you know, you had his girlfriend, you had those two guys that he would pawn off his, his uh, Nick's ring to. You had that short, chubby, balding guy who I thought was like a red herring because I thought he was going to do something crazy. Um, the guy with the cast. Um, you had You had his family. You had his wife. You had his... Um, his own uh, issues at home, um, his daughter. I mean, they had a really funny scene where they didn't really talk about anything, but I thought that encapsulated um, kind of a father-daughter relationship um, at the time. But it was just a, a lot of spinning plates. Um, Kevin Garnett was another big one. I mean, the, the gem itself was another big one. There was just a lot of different points that were all spinning at the same time. Um, and usually it, everything would come to a head at his shop, which was awesome. And then on top of that, I'd mentioned red herrings. Um, those are just things that like you'll see in a movie where you're like, oh, that's going to be bad. Like the movie kind of opens up funny enough with this colonoscopy, which usually in a movie you would see that and you'd think, okay, that's going to be a problem later. And even later on when the doctor calls him, the doctor kind of has this tone of like, well, see, the thing is, and I'm like, okay, so what is he going to have this like issue? And then the doc says, well, no, you're fine. It was nothing. We just wanted to make sure. So there were, there were a lot of things like that um, that kind of had you going one way, but then had you kind of went the complete different way. Now the, and then just moving past that, cause I could, I mean, I can go out on about this forever, but just the, the other thing was the ending was so, it was so satisfying. Um, actually, let me let me just ask this question: Who who has not seen Uncut Gems? Okay, I'm I'm. Give it, it Roberto. I know it's okay. Um, <laughs> I, it, I think it's better because I don't ruin it. But the ending was very satisfying because he he. I'm trying to talk about it without ruining it. He. You can say because reasons. Yeah, I mean, so like Howard got his comeuppance in both ways. He got what he wanted and he got what he deserved. Um, for, for that, usually with stories, you can only have one or the other. If you try to have both, it's, it's going to feel unresolved because there were, there were no big changes. But the way the movie ends, 
um, had me very satisfied with his goal, um, but also just satisfied with what he deserved. Um, so I think I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, if, yeah, I mean, Roberto, if you have a chance to watch it, uh, watch it. Um, uh, I know Parasite won the Oscar for best film last year. And I was kind of on board with that because I'd seen Parasite after watching Uncut Gems. I, I it, that, that seems a little bit of a stretch. I think for me, just because Parasite was a good story that used a lot of different genres to tell a really good, compelling story. Um, Uncut Gems had had my knee bouncing up and down since since he's on the phone walking down the street from from that opening scene with him um so that yeah i just un, uncut gems is probably the best thing i've seen in years and if you have an opportunity to watch it or even watch it again i would i would highly recommend it if not from again just for me from a story perspective i thought they told this story with all of that was going on in a very compelling clean way and it's 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 just just to you kind of just close it off here. Um, I was very very intrigued with the script, so I downloaded it. <clears throat> and on the bottom, where it says obviously uncut gems, under the writer's name, um, it says that Howard we trust, which which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and if you watch the movie, you kind of get a an idea of, of what that's going towards. But yeah, if you haven't seen Uncut Gems, um, do yourself a favor, watch it. Let us know what you think. And uh, and then yeah, and then we'll we'll go from there, and I'll pick another movie next time, and then we can discuss that one. So I'll add in my uh, my add watch later list. <laughs> Definitely will in my quarantine list. I'm pretty sure. I <laughs> yeah, I searched it up right now, and I and I realized, oh, I've seen this in a lot of memes before. I got this. I think I'm okay. gonna watch it now. <laughs> yeah, please do. Um, and yeah, that's I another. See it in memes because Adam Sandler says. I'm gonna come, and then <laughs> I mean, how can it not turn into a meme? Uh, I send that small clip to people as a meme. Okay, yeah, so I haven't seen those, but yeah, I, I can see why they would pick that thing to do that. So, Javi, I have a, a question for you. Mm -hmm. So, do you believe that Uncut Gems really got snubbed for the Oscar nomination? Yeah, you know, I, I didn't go back and see what they actually got nominated for, but I remember at the time hearing a lot of um, a lot of kind of complaints about that, that they didn't get enough. I don't know if, Oscar, uh, if Adam Sandler was even nominated for Best Actor, which he definitely he should have been, because he... No, he wasn't. They, no, they yeah. didn't even watch the movie. Oh. I don't think. Mm. But, I mean, that... With, with Adam Sandler, I think he gets a lot of guff for doing, like, shitty Adam Sandler movies, but... When I saw Spanglish years ago, I was like, "Holy shit! He he's got some stuff, and you know, he's got like Punch Drunk Love. He's done a couple, maybe a couple other serious roles. But I think this one was like his big, um, like introduction, I guess, into the the whole dramatic role, which I appreciated. And uh, yeah, they, I, yeah, they definitely, for whatever reason, didn't get, I think, the appreciation they should have. Um, but. And, Daniel Day Lewis apparently called him and congratulated him on his performance. And to be honest, I feel like that means that's like better than an Oscar. Is Daniel Day Lewis calling you and being like, "You did good, kid." Yeah, <laughs> that's not an that's Oscar. Better. It's a Danny. That's um, a Danny. Yeah, <laughs> the Danny Awards. So it's 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 time for Roberto to tell us how we can. Uh, uh, make a little money uh, out of this situation. So first I'm going to make him presenter and he can walk us through it. Sure thing. Give me a second. I'm going to upload a presentation. Click on that. Confirm it. And boom. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Killian. Hold on. You did better. <laughs> I thought you were version of it. <laughs> Oops. I don't know. I don't know why. Okay, well, it's all right. Go ahead. I'll erase it while you do that. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, hi everybody. Um, so we're in this extreme pandemic that's going on, and right now we're out of toilet paper. This is an emergency right now. So I think um, we're also not making any money because uh, a lot of people are being unemployed. It, it's skyrocketing at this point. So we have to make money somehow, right? And right now, everybody's buying to toilet paper, and therefore, I think I think it's the obvious solution that we gotta find toilet paper and start selling it to other people for a high price. Now, how do we do it? Now, in this very simple step-by-step -step plan that I have right here, it's gonna be 
Very simple, but I'm going to add some details on each and every step of what's going to help and present. So, number one, you're going to have to steal them, but I also wanted to point something out. By stealing them, I mean you're going to have to, like, actually, like, uh, negotiate with people that has toilet paper. Now, I'm not saying about your neighbors. You got to, like, uh, negotiate with people that actually distributes toilet paper, you know? Or that goes to um like uh, the, like uh, like at speedway or gas stations I mean gas stations uh uh well gas stations is the only one I could think of right now because I went <laughs> to the gas station the other day and I saw a toilet paper anyway oh but if you are still going to work and if there's a private bathroom there is going to be a toilet paper in there as well now the mm. product or the, the the quality of that toilet paper in workspaces and and, and um what's it called and the gas stations it's not going to be the best but you still have toilet paper. If that's something that you have that not a lot of people do right now, so it's better than nothing. So that's step one right now. Steal them or negotiate with the people that you're really close with. I am personally close with my manager at Speedway <laughs> around the block, and he and I go a ways. And you know, he, I'll ask him like, "Hey, you got toilet paper?" And he goes like, "Yeah, man, I got you. You bought me all the, you bought all the M and M's, and so I'll take you to the bag." I was like, "All right." So I got toilet paper the other day. Second step. You're gonna have to sell them privately, okay? Because if people, because if uh, you know, I'm not sure. It's I'm pretty sure it's illegal to like uh, sell toilet paper again. I think at this time, I don't know, but you're gonna have to sell them in a private place. So that whether that be like in an alleyway, um, rather the, uh, the black market, <laughs> black market in the alley, or yeah, a car maybe <laughs> or it's, some are quiet, okay? And then you want to make sure, but the thing is that you don't want to sell a whole roll. That's the thing. You want to sell them like, foo, 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 and just give them a peek because you can only get so much toilet papers around the area. Are we going by square, man? <laughs> Three squares oh a dollar. Yes, I'm going to make so much money. <laughs> we're going by square? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. yeah Single ply. Single ply square. So let's just say, like, if you weigh each square, let's just assume, like, each square is, like, I don't know. Uh, 50 cents, right? So let's do 100 paper squares. That's like um, an estimate, like $10. <laughs> so you got to make sure you use that wisely throughout your day. Um, 100 squares at 50 cents a square. Seriously, you've had <laughs> that class before. I don't know. It's an estimate. I think it's $50. I think it's $50. I have $50 then. <laughs> <laughs> you, if you if you, if you slam your pillow to your left, you can hit Roberto. Oh, that's right. I cut you. You are. Well, oh! <laughs> there you go. Right. <laughs> so, and then, and uh, very quickly, Roberto, because we're running out of time. <laughs> yeah, shit. I didn't realize the time. We were supposed to be fifteen. Okay. Well, that's the plan. Very simple process. Okay. Um. Yeah, just sell toilet paper, steal it from your boss or your workplace, uh, gas stations. Uh, I'm telling you, it's a, you're going to make money and you're going to make a lot, I, I promise you. Not that I've done it before yet, but we'll see. Yeah, because okay. yeah, you spent totally on the M&Ms. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, I would like to remind everybody out there, um, even though AJ is not here, um, he is our legal advisor and he says, don't do this. Okay, um, let's see now, I'm taking the presenter and I'm getting, all right, we're gonna have that up. Um, all right, so uh, I, I'd like to say thanks to all of our wonderful um, uh, stars of this podcast, this nascent podcast. Um, and uh, it's been really nice sort of having our lives intertwined instead of just coming to school together, being able to come together from our own spaces and share a little bit more than usual. And um, thank you all for your infinite patience for how we've been doing things and for being so amazing as we work together. So uh, all of you watching, thank you. All of you here, fist bump. Cool.